Okay, so before we start, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of the different mods and the different settings that I use to make it easier in making these crafts. So first off, all the links for the mods will be in the description. There's only three, um, and none of them actually add any parts. They just um, just help a little in showing, uh, showing colliders and um, editing things a bit faster. So once uh, here we are in the Alt F12 menu, you should go into debugging and show log all exceptions on the screen. What this does is whenever there is a null ref, a null ref is whenever the game divides by zero or does weird things like that. <laughs> That's what usually causes your game to crash, null refs. Um, you want to click this and what will happen is uh, whenever there is one that happens, it will show it up on the on the, uh, the corner of the screen. And if one happens, you'll know to just hit Control Z, go back, uh, save it, and then reload it and see if it's still there or whatnot. And make sure to also do backups of your craft constantly. You want to do that so you're not losing your progress. The other thing you want to do is grab these mods. Uh, Kaleidoscope, this one will let you see the colliders for parts. Uh, this is pretty much a necessity if you want to do things with hinges, or at least things as, as fine-tuned as what I did in the Switch. The other one is editor extensions. This one I'm simply using for one feature, the infinite offset. The other one is memgraph. What this does is just log the memory usage of Kerbal Space Program, and right here you see this. This is an image of it in game. Uh, you open it up with Alt and then the star in the, your num key, and what it does is it shows whenever there's a memory spike. You know how your game freezes every once in a while? It'll like it'll stutter. It'll just like pause for like a second and then continue on, and then a couple seconds later it'll, it'll pause and then it'll continue on again. These marks, each of these. It logs when those are and you can see right here something happened and it started doing it a lot faster you can use this mod to figure out when it is you want to reboot your game just close it and reload it again and those starters will vanish now those are the three different mods you want to use and another, another thing before I start uh, you may want to check out this as well a basic aircraft design explained simply with pictures it's made by captain uh, from 2013 It's very old and because of that anything that he references with drag is very outdated but other than that, all the things that he talks about, all of here, uh, lifting force, center of mass, center of lift, all of these things, position of wings, um, all of these things, this is really important information. How it is that uh, the position of your wing affects the aerodynamics of your craft and everything. So I definitely suggest checking this out. A link to all four of these will be in the description. Okay, so here we are in the space plane hangar. I'm just gonna load up, not the switch. The spear is a bit simpler, so I'm gonna load this one up first and show you all the different things. Now, oh, if you're anything like me, oh, let me get rid of that. If you're anything like me when you wanna use editor extensions, um, you want it to behave as much like stock as possible. So what I did is I actually removed all of the angle snaps except for the 15 degree. Now, if you just have it at 15 degrees, it's very simple and um, it pretty much behaves exactly the same as stock. What you want to do is worry about no offset limit. You want that turned on, and what it let me do is this. You can see that I actually have this craft split sort of into two different things. I have the capsule, and then I have the engines directly attached to that capsule. Now, if I control Z a whole bunch until we're back to how the craft was at the start, I have everything built around these engine pods. What that does is it helps a lot with bending in flight. Uh, what I actually had in a couple of previous versions of the craft, um, what would happen is I would lift off and this side and this side would kind of move separately. When it would take off, one of them would bend up a little and be really weird and it would just really annoy me. And uh, what I did is I just attached everything to the engine nacelles and uh, it made everything work really well. Let me show the center of mass and center of lift, and let's also show the, uh, the thrust. Uh, first thing you'll see is that the center of thrust is actually pretty close to the rest of them. It's pretty in line. Not quite the same, but it's very close to being in line. They're off slightly because it lets me, um, lets me yaw even faster upwards, but if you want to have a nice and stable plane, you should have all of these very close to each other in, in alignment like that. You always want the center of lift to be behind the center of mass. Right here, they're actually very, very close to each other. If you want a fighter plane, you want, if you want to be very maneuverable, you put them very close to each other. But if you want it to fly really well, 
Um, if you want it to not spin around backwards uh, and be really unstable, you always want the center of lift to be behind the center of mass. The other secret that I have, uh, let me get rid of these. Let me get rid of those two so you can see a bit closer. Inside of each of these engine nacelles, I have hidden three SES units. Three in each. One, two, three. Now, they're very hard to see, and I have all of the fuel emptied out of these uh, to sort of compensate for that. But those are what give it its its unique flying ability. That's what that's what makes it this maneuverable. Let me just lift off the pad really fast here. So I'm just gonna hold down S right now, just holding down S. Woo! Look at that. On a dime, it'll just do a flip. Whatever speed you're going, it'll always flip around like this. And that is because of how close the center of mass and the center of lift are to each other. But another thing that's really nice is this plane can lift off the runway really quickly. And the reason why is because of the positioning of these wheels. Now you can see, if the center of mass is right there, the wheels are actually pretty close to, uh, to that position. It, um, it kind of acts as a seesaw, and uh, it rotates around these. If I, for example, if I just flip these wings around backwards, let me just flip them around. They're pointing this way. Um, another thing you can do to make sure that wheels are aligned perfectly oops, um, is you can have uh, the offset tool and you can put it on absolute, the, uh, the absolute rotation. Now, uh, if you have it set to the angle snap, what happens is if you click on this, it will always align to the forwards angle on that craft. Like, let's say, let's just get rid of this. Let's go to local. And let's just like put these wheels <laughs> super offset. Then let's go back, click on it, go to 15 degrees, and then uh, go to absolute. And I can just fix this with a couple of clicks. And it'll be perfectly in line with the front again. There, you see that? Look, now it's perfectly straight. Now, um, I just rotated these wings, uh, these, these wheels backwards, and so I'm gonna launch it, and you'll see that it'll actually, uh, it'll take a bit, a bit longer to take off. It'll be a bit harder on the craft. See all that? You see how it's bumping on the ground? It's a lot easier on the plane if you have the wheels very close to the center of mass. Let me show you another really big plane, and I'll show you, uh, I'll show you the same exact thing. This thing is the, uh, this is the Olympia, and you may recognize it from a previous video that I had where I dropped a Cessna plane out of the back of it. Uh, but you'll notice, center of mass is right there. Center of lift is way back there, and that makes it really stable. And um, you'll notice that the wheels on this thing are all centered right around the center of mass. I want to go forwards in time in this video because this thing takes a real long time to go off the runway. Okay, so now we're getting up to speed. So um, I'm just going to rotate this thing up ever so slowly. And there we go. If the wheels were way in the back, it would be a lot harder to lift this thing up because it'd be rotating all the way to this craft around the back corner. Instead, it's just rotating around the middle. This is applicable with pretty much every single craft that you build. Another thing that can help out with wheels is having them as far away from the middle of your craft as is reasonably possible. This little assessment plan that I had, I ended up moving the wheels from uh, the really small one in the middle to way out here on the wing. And when they're folded up in flight, they actually uh, look pretty nice. They're just stowed and um, it makes this thing able to land a lot more stable. The positioning of your flaps. Now, once again, center of mass, center of lift. What I have set up here is these canards way up in the front, and then I have these fins way on in the back. Uh, what I did with that is um, all of my flaps are very far away from the center of lift and the center of mass. These right here give it a lot of control upwards and downwards. Uh, just because they're so far away from the center of mass and the center of lift, 
they give it even more um even more control One last thing which is very important to your craft is how it is that you manage fuel flow uh, as you fly the plane and how it is around the center of mass. You always want your fuel to be draining evenly from the front and the back, from forwards and behind the center of mass. And the reason why is because you always want the center of mass to stay the same. You always want the plane to fly the same uh, with the same exact properties. But yeah, so as you can see, I just have these big S strakes, four of them, uh, one in, uh, in each, I guess, quarter of this plane and they drain evenly look they all have plus one plus one plus one plus one and if I really wanted I could also add these engine nacelles uh, and fill those up as well but I don't have them filled uh, because I have all those reaction wheels stowed inside and it's already cheaty enough to have the, uh, the reaction wheels inside I don't like filling it up with fuel but it is also an option but yeah uh, this thing uh, because it has these 400 units of fuel from these four biggest wing strikes uh, it has enough fuel to fly to the inland KSC and back. I've done it before. It's incredible. Uh, but yeah, with all of those uh, tips and tricks, uh, you guys should be set. And uh, I hope you guys can build some good planes. Thanks. Until next time. Have a good out.